Dear students, now we are going to discuss cylindrical cavity magnetron and its working principle in detail. Cylindrical magnetron is also called as cavity magnetron. It is a high power microwave oscillator which is having multiple resonant cavities. It is a crossed field tube or M type tube that means the electric field and the magnetic field both are crossed each other. Crossed each other means that electric field and magnetic field both are perpendicular to each other. Okay. Interaction of electrons with this electric field and magnetic fields in the resonant cavities can generate the oscillation. Okay. Do you all understand? This is the structure of cylindrical magnetron. It consists of a cylindrical cathode of radius A at the center which is surrounded by a cylindrical anode of radius B. This anode consists of several equispaced cavities in its circumference. The space between this anode and cathode is called as interaction space. There is a permanent magnet in this magnetron which is used to produce the strong magnetic field okay so now we are going to give the dc supply voltage between this cathode and the anode and then we can take that microwave oscillation from this cavity using coupling method okay so here we can see that this is the electric field here the permanent magnet can create magnetic field both are perpendicular to each other that's why it is called as crossed field type okay so this is the overview of the structure cylindrical magnetron consists of a cylindrical cathode of radius a at the center which is surrounded by a cylindrical anode of radius b the anode consists of several equispaced cavities in its circumference the space between the anode and cathode is known as interaction space we are going to give the dc supply voltage between the cathode and the anode then the permanent magnet in the magnetron is used to produce a strong magnetic field in the cavities. Okay. The electric field is present radially and the magnetic field is present axially in the cavity. That means both are perpendicular to each other. Okay. So next we are going to discuss the mode of operation of magnetron. If there are n re-entrant cavities in the anode, then there exists n resonant frequencies so based on the number of cavities we can define that mode of operation in general here the phase shift between two adjacent cavities can be expressed as phi n that value is always equal to 2 pi n by capital n so this capital n represents the number of cavities okay so here small n is equal to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 up to plus or minus n by 2. So it defines the mode of oscillation here. So here magnetron is operated in the pi mode. So this is for the general condition. Okay. So practically magnetron is operated in the pi mode. For getting that pi mode, we need to have the small n value is equal to capital N by 2. So we have to take the small n is equal to capital N by 2. Then this value becomes pi. Correct. This pi mode is very important in magnetron operation because in this pi mode the successive cavities in anode have opposite sign. That means the phase excitation is maximum in the cavities. Here we can see this plus the first cavity is plus means the next one is minus the next one is plus minus. So 180 degree phase shift is there in the cavities okay. Electric field is in radial direction, magnetic field is in axial direction, okay. So, this is the line of force in pi mode for this cylindrical magnetron. Next, we are going to discuss the working principle of this magnetron. Here, we have to give the DC supply voltage between anode and cathode. So, when the DC voltage and magnetic flux both are adjusted properly, the electrons from the cathode try to travel towards the anode. So we have to adjust the supply voltage as well as the magnetic flux by changing the magnetic properties. Okay. So here we can consider different cases based on that magnetic field. 
if the magnetic field is absent in the magnetron that is flux is equal to zero at that time the electron emitted from this cathode is traveling towards the anode under only the radial electric force okay if there is no magnetic field then that electron from this cathode is traveling towards this anode in a straight path under that electric force next we are going to apply a small magnetic field in the magnetron when a small magnetic field is present inside the magnetron then the electron deviates from its straight path so if there is no magnetic field the electron is moving towards this anode in a straight path if you are going to apply a small magnetic field due to small magnetic flux it deviates from its straight path towards this cavity right the result of electric and magnetic forces will cause the curved path for that electron movement so the movement of electron becomes a curved one okay so the next condition is when the magnetic field is further increased the electrons get highly deflected by the magnetic field the movement of the electron is highly deflected because of that strong magnetic field okay this effect causes the anode current to be zero so due to this high magnetic field there is no anode current the value of magnetic field that causes the anode current to become zero is called as critical magnetic field okay the last condition is if the magnetic field is increased beyond the critical level then the electron return back to the cathode itself without reaching the anode okay so here we can see the trajectory of this electron movement so here that electron is return back to this cathode so here the process of reaching that emitted electrons from the cathode back to the cathode is known as back heating okay so next one is hull cut off voltage in order to avoid this back heating the supply voltage provided to the anode and cathode must be cut off after the critical magnetic field reached okay so it is denoted as voc that is equal to e by 8m b0 squared b squared 1 minus a squared by b squared the whole squared so here a is the radius of cathode b is the radius of anode okay so here the hull cut off voltage is mainly used to avoid back heating process okay so next hull cut off magnetic equation it is the equation which represents the magnetic field required to return that electrons back to the cathode so it is denoted as voc that is equal to 8 v0 m by e the whole power 1 by 2 divided by b into 1 minus a squared by b squared if the magnetic flux is greater than the critical magnetic flux then the electrons will not reach the anode okay next characteristics of the magnetron it is having very high efficiency about 40 to 70 percentage high output power that is 80 kilowatt its operating frequency range is up to 10 gigahertz its unloaded quality factor is omega naught c divided by gr external quality factor value is omega naught c by gl that is conductance of the load conductance of the resonator okay finally the loader quality factor of this cavity magnetron is omega naught c divided by gr plus gl okay next one is equivalent circuit of magnetron so here we are going to represent the equivalent circuit of that cavity okay so here ye that is that electronic admittance for this magnetron here this lc gr so this three components represent the resonator resonator means here the cavity re entrant resonant cavities okay capacitance inductance along with the conductance of this resonator and the last one is conductance of that load okay applications of magnetron magnetron is widely used in radar transmitters with high output power from 10 kilowatts to 3 megawatts it is also used in industrial heating applications it is widely used in microwave oven 
Its frequency range is 2.45 gigahertz. Its output power is 650 to 1200 watts. Okay, for this microwave oven. It is also used in satellite and missile applications for telemetry.